Happy Maker Monday. We are talking about sewing on silicone today. Have you seen these really fun silicone projects? Um, they have oven mitts, there's trivets, there's, this is a mug rug. So we're gonna walk through the demo on how to make the mug rug. But it's this little silicone bit right here. It comes in the package. So the packet, what I like about this brand is that you can buy the pattern with one set of siliconies in it, and then you could just buy the refills. So the refills are cheaper than buying the pattern all over again, so you don't have to keep buying the pattern every time you wanna make these. But the silicones, so these are like those Silpat sheets you bake cookies on, only they have texture to them. So see those orange peels that are on there? That's actually textured, which is nice because then things don't slide on it. So not only does, do things stick to the silicone, but they also, they also grip. So I chose the mug rug as a demo because there was, a, there was extra options in here to show you how to do things. I wanted to talk about the, the questions I get the most about these silicone things. Is it hard to sew on? No, but there are some tricks. Can my machine do it? Yes, but there are some tricks. Do I need a special needle? Uh, kinda. You don't need to go crazy about your needle, um, but we are going to talk about some tips on how to get the best results to get there. Okay, so what I did was I made matching mug rugs for my boys when they play video games. I know it's probably really shocking that somebody as nerdy as me has kids that play video games, but I do. So um, this fabric that we are featuring in this mug rug is left literally leftover scraps from making this quilt here. I just finished this quilt yesterday, and yeah, I'm in love. So this is the Invaders quilt. The fabric is by Northcott. It's from a line called Gaming Zone, which we have the whole line on our website. We're also selling the kit. So the kit has all of the fabric for the top and the binding and the pattern. The pattern is by Miss Winnie Designs. They make lots of really fun, nerdy fabrics or nerdy patterns. The fabric is from, like I said, from North Cut. But this is a nice big quilt. It finishes about um, perfect size for a twin size bed. This is definitely going in my house when this fabric's gone out of, the, out of the store. So this was a really fun quilt to make. Like I said, I just finished her yesterday. So that means I had a whole bunch of scraps laying around for today's demo. So this, I just finished this one. I'm gonna give this to one of my kids. I don't know which one yet. And I'm gonna show you an the, another option, another setting option for the second one. So this is what it look, looks like when it's all done. So now we're gonna talk about how I got there. The pattern gives you three options. You can use one block. So if you have a, a fabric you wanna feature, this is a one size block, or this design right here is what I did for this one. The one I'm gonna demo is this square and a square and a square. So that's this block here. I actually fussy cut some fabric to make the center of the block really interesting. We're not gonna talk about the patchworking because it's pretty straightforward patchworking. And as a bonus, the pattern does tell you how to make this shape. So we don't need to go through all that because we're gonna talk tips on sewing on silicone, okay? So, okay, so I've got all my pieces laid out. I've pre-cut everything we need to cut. All of your size measurements are in the pattern. Don't worry about that part. In the pattern, you also get two of these silicone -y thingies. A couple of tips for working with this stuff. I use, a, I use a Microtex needle almost all the time in my machine. For this project, I have a size 90 in my machine. You don't have to change the thread size that you're using. I typically piece with a size 50 cotton thread or a size 60 poly cotton blend, either of those are gonna work. If you really want to see the stitching though, you might wanna put a size 40 or so thread in. But the size 90, the Microtex, you want to put a new needle in your machine when you're starting this because you are stitching through not only the thickness of the silicone, but also multiple layers of fabric as well as batting by the time you get to the end. So do yourself a favor, put a fresh needle on my, my next little tool tip that I'm gonna suggest is these, by, these quilting clips by Quilter Select. These are a new uh, come out for Alex Anderson. She's kind of updated a bit of the um, sewing clips that we've had for quite a while. The features that make this a little bit different is see how the, the top part of that beak hangs over a little bit? 
that's really handy for grabbing onto the fabric. So see when I put that, it opens really nice and wide, but when I put this together, the top actually covers the bottom, so it really bites onto things. Also, the metal grip in this is stronger than other, than other um, sewing clips I have. So that's the big things that make these different. So I'm gonna use these in today's project. The next little tip, that the thing that makes this easier is that you're not actually sewing directly on the silicone. So that's a question I get a lot from people is, how, you know, do I have to put a special foot on? Do I need to change anything to sew on the silicone? And the answer is no, because we're gonna actually layer our silicone between two pieces of fabric. And I actually cut this the wrong size, so I'm gonna trim this down real quick. The piece of fabric is the same size as the piece of silicone. For whatever reason I made that measurement wrong, but look, I fixed it. We're gonna take the smooth side of the silicone, place it down on the right side of the fabric, okay? This part is important because I don't wanna to try to sew, um, I don't want my foot to go right on this silicone because yes, there are um, feet that will help you sew on this, but if we don't need to, then why? So we've got a piece of fabric on the back, piece of fabric on the front. Again, all of the measurements for all of these things are in your, in your pattern. I don't wanna pin through this because if I put pins through this, I'm gonna make holes in it. So my tip for this step is to clip your silicone and your fabric, leave this side open because we're gonna add this piece of fabric to that. So I'm just gonna clip these three sides. I really don't want this to move because I don't, I don't have a way to really pin through it any other way. Then I'm gonna line up my block with my silicone piece. I, I don't like putting clips in and then pulling them out right before I get to where I have to sew. So what I did with mine was I took my clips and I put them outside of my seam allowance. We're gonna sew a quarter inch seam allowance. So I'm gonna clip this, but I'm gonna do it outside of the seam allowance. So I don't have to take it to the machine and move these clips as I'm sewing. Okay. We're going to sew a quarter inch seam allowance right here, and I'm going to show you some tips for that. All right, so a couple of tips when you get to the sewing part. I'm going to use my quarter inch foot. I like my pivot feature always on my machine, but for this especially because you don't want the silicone to shift as you're sewing it. So normally I don't back stitch when I'm quilt piecing, but in this case I'm going to. So. I have increased my stitch length to a three millimeter. You could even go three and a half if your feed dogs are having a hard time going through this. So increase your stitch length and slow your machine down. I tend to be a speed demon when I sew, or anything else for that matter. So I am slowing, I'm slowing my speed control down to halfway. Then I'm gonna remind myself not to mess with it. No touchy. No touchy. All right, so slow your speed down, increase your stitch length, and go ahead and do yourself a favor and tie this off one or two stitches. We don't normally tie off when we're doing piecing because it increases bulk, but this is already pretty thick, all right? I'm gonna use my quarter inch foot because that's just a, a nice um, training wheel sort of thing. If you go real slow, the silicone, the weight of the silicone won't pull away from you. If you start sewing fast through this, the extra weight of the silicone in here is gonna, is gonna pull to the side. So do yourself a favor and just go slow with a longer stitch. Again, I'm gonna back stitch at the end here, and then we're gonna talk about some pressing tips. So we all know that I love steam. In this instance, I'm gonna turn my steam off. The reason for that is it's silicone. So if you put steam on this, it's just gonna get wet. So I'm still gonna press my, or set my seam like I normally do, but I've turned my steam off and I'm gonna pull this back and use the weight of my iron to press this to one side. Now we didn't do a wider seam allowance than usual. We still did a quarter inch seam allowance. So you'll notice I didn't cut my point off here. So I still have a nice pleasing point. But if I turn the steam on right now, this is just gonna get wet, which is annoying. But it's not gonna melt because just like your cookie sheet isn't gonna melt, this isn't gonna melt. So we're gonna press that to one side and then we're gonna put borders on. 
So now we're gonna sew borders on the top and the bottom. Since you have extra thickness here, even if you measure these, they're probably not gonna be quite right. So, because the silicone's gonna take up extra space. I don't, I like to pin through fabric more than the clips. So I'm gonna pin through the fabric section. Then I'm gonna use clips in the silicone section, but you see how that fabric hangs off a little bit? That's okay, we're gonna trim it up after. So put some silicone, put some clips on the silicone section, but put them outside of the area where you're gonna sew. Okay, so there's those. I'm gonna do that on the top and the bottom and we're gonna sew a quarter inch seam allowance. Again, go slow and use a longer, a longer stitch length. Also, when you're putting these borders on, since you know that they're not gonna be perfectly straight, you know that you're gonna have one end that hangs over, do yourself a favor and make sure that the side over here is straight, so you only have to trim off one side, not both ends. All right. So we're gonna go and sew this next. So now I've sewn my top and bottom borders on and see how this is hanging over on this side? I put it on the silicone side for a reason. So I'm gonna flip this over, take my ruler and line it up with the straight part of my silicone piece. I don't wanna cut through my silicone, I just wanna line my ruler up with the edge of it. Because then I can cut the top and bottom off and I've got a really nice straight piece. We're gonna do the same thing with the sides. Remember that the side with the silicone is probably gonna be a little bit looser or a little bit bigger than the side without. So you wanna line this up and you wanna really try to get those edges lined up on this side because if you don't have the same side on your borders, you're, this isn't gonna come out square. So I'm gonna give you some tips on doing this part, okay? We're gonna pin, you'll notice where I put my pins, they are outside of the seam allowance and in the corners. This other side is just fabric, so it's probably gonna lay together a little bit straighter. Either way, we still want to line up our corners and pin them. I I'm sure that I have probably mentioned baggy bottoms to you in the past. So if you have a piece of fabric in your patchwork that is bigger than the piece you're pinning it to and you've measured everything and you really need it to be straight, here's an extra tip for you. Whichever piece of fabric is looser, put it on the bottom when you sew. So see how there's just a little bit of fullness in that? It's not a lot, it's probably not even noticeable. When I take this to my machine, I'm gonna sew with this side down. That's the reason I put my pins out here where I do. I'm not in danger of sewing over them. Same thing on this side. You can see the fullness a lot bigger on this side because of the silicone. So I'm gonna pull this out and stretch it flat. I am gonna have to put a clip in this one just because otherwise it's gonna wiggle. I'm just gonna put it in the middle. And then we're gonna go over here and we're gonna sew this. So we talked about baggy bottom. So I have put my border piece on the bottom and I'm still gonna sew very slowly because I am sewing through the silicone on this part. Make sure that everything's lined up really nicely or else it won't come out straight in the end. And we are gonna do some squaring up so that's not that big a deal, but try to, try to have as accurate a patchwork as you possibly can. Okay, so we sewed that side on. We're just gonna sew the other side on real quick, and then we'll go to the next step. So now I've got my borders all pressed out. This is pretty, pretty straightforward so far. Now we're gonna do some quilting. So I have two pieces of back, back. this is gonna be my backing. So see how we've got our front and our back. I cut two pieces of this. If you don't wanna waste an extra piece of nice fabric, you can use anything you want for, for the backing. Um, you're not actually going to see it. So in this step for the quilting process, if you don't, if you're, if you're kind of short on fabric and you don't have enough, you can use anything you want for this stage. So you got a scrap of fabric you don't love anymore. Here's a good time to use it. So we're going to put a piece of fabric down. We're going to put a piece of batting on top of that. Um, if you want to make your mug rug heat resistant, you can put Insulbrite here. 
You can put two layers of cotton. I would definitely suggest natural fiber in the middle because you want it to be absorbent, okay? Then we're gonna center our piece on the whole thing. It doesn't matter that you, you actually want the backing and the batting to be a little bit bigger because we're gonna do some quilting here. Um, I'm gonna pin through my fabric parts however you like to quilt. If you wanna spray this with 505 before you start quilting, that is up to you. If you wanna just put these clips around the outside, you can do that too. Um, I am, personally, I'm not going to do any quilting out here in the very edge. So that's a good spot to put your pins because then you don't have to take them out as you're quilting it. So what I did on the sample was I just did some really basic stitch in the ditch quilting. It doesn't really matter that much. You just wanna be able to hold it together, okay? And that's what I'll do here too. This is probably not the time to practice really intricate free motion quilting simply because the weight of the silicone is gonna make it a little bit harder to move it through your machine. If you're used to free motion quilting though, and this isn't gonna mess you up, go for it. It's, it's fine with me. Um, so what I did with mine was I just put my stitch in the ditch foot on and I just sort of went around all of the ditches. So I'm gonna start here and I'm gonna sew all the way around the square. And when I get to here, I'm gonna sew inside this square. Okay, and then I'm gonna backtrack it a little bit and sew inside this square. I would probably suggest at least, you know, when you go around this side, make sure you're stitching through the silicone. And then I would, I'm probably gonna go back just outside the border and stitch all the way around because that's gonna anchor all of this stuff down. Okay, so I'm gonna go and do a little bit of quilting just like I explained it. And then we're gonna finish this up. So we have done all of our quilting. Again, I'm, I'm gonna um, reiterate longer stitch length and go slow. So I stitched out the pattern I just talked about and stitched all the way around the outside. So you can see that it's a little bit wonky now, right? We've got, you know, quilting, quilting makes things shift a little bit. This part of the fabric you're not gonna see. So if you've got extra threads or back there, don't worry too much about trimming them up, but you can see that we've got enough quilting in here to really keep it together. What I like to do in this stage is take my, um, my backing and I'm actually gonna lay my, um, I'm gonna put the two backings right sides together. And I know this seems weird, but, but stay with me for a second. I'm gonna put these together then I'm going to trim this all down. And if I trim it all at the same time, then my backing will be the same size as my top. So I'm gonna take my ruler. What we have right now, you can see that it's just a little, it's a little bit off. It's not bad. Like if you really just wanted to trim off the extra backing and batting at this point, you could. I'm gonna make mine just a little bit smaller just because I really like a nice straight edge to start with. So I'm gonna take my ruler, I'm gonna trim through everything. This is the top, the batting, the fabric that we quilted through, plus the extra, um, the extra backing piece. I hope that makes sense. But I'm gonna trim through everything and I'm gonna square it all up at the same time. So we've got some pretty crazy quilter spaghetti over here. And we've got our quilted mug rug and our backing is now the correct size. So I'm gonna take my backing, put them right sides together. And I'm gonna pin this all together. And since I can pin all the way around the outside of the border and I don't have to worry about clips, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna just sort of loosely pin these together. Then I'm going to find a start stop point probably on the bottom or the, the top side, doesn't really matter. And I want to start and stop and leave about a three to four inch opening. So if you're like me and you get a little excited and you just keep sewing, it might help to make a marking that's about three to four inches for you to start and stop. Because turning this inside out, because of the extra thickness and weight of the silicone is a little bit crazy making, leave yourself a nice wide opening. 
So now for the tips on sewing your backing to your front. I've got my J foot on. I like my J foot anytime I need to sew about 3 8 of an inch. Because if I put my needle in the center position and then I use the edge of my foot, I can usually get about 3 8 of an inch um, seam allowance. I'm going to start sewing and backstitch because, like I said, we're going to turn this right way out and there's a lot of tugging that happens. So we're going to start and we're going to backstitch at the beginning. Here's another tip about your J foot. If you sew to the end, and I'm going to show, see if I can zoom in on this foot here. Do you see on the foot right here, there's a little circle, not the line, not any of the lines, but there's a circle right there on your foot. If you sew to the circle, to the edge of your piece, and this is why I like my pivot feature. See how my needle is down, but my foot is up and I can turn my fabric and my needle doesn't come up. Let me show you where my foot is lined up. So since I sewed right to that circle, my foot is lined up right with the side of my piece. And I can just sew around the other side. And I just keep sewing until I get to that circle on my foot. And then almost like magic, when I turn the corner, my foot is lined up again. So I'm gonna sew all the way around. Again, I'm gonna leave three or four inches for turning up here. And then we're gonna talk tips on turning. Okay, so we've sewn all the way around. We've got a nice opening pocket. We have quite a bit of bulk in these corners though. So I'm going to take a pair of scissors and I'm gonna cut these corners away. Be very careful not to cut really close. You don't wanna cut right up to your seam allowance. Cut it about halfway. Because even with the tool I'm gonna to use to turn the corners, you still have to keep enough fabric there for, uh, for the thread to bite onto, okay? So now we're gonna take and turn this right way out. Y'all know I love my precision pointing turner and that's what I'm gonna use for this. But since you have all this silicone to pull through, having that nice wide opening is very, very helpful. So I'm gonna push that all the way through and I'm gonna get my point turner and we're gonna poke these corners out. Okay, here's my point turner. I'm gonna go right inside that opening. And the reason I really like this point turner is that rounded end, you can really push on that and the corners, and it's not gonna poke through. If you ever tried doing this with a pair of tweezers or a pair of scissors or anything like that, you poked right through that seam. I have yet to poke through a seam with this precision turning tool. Okay, and then once I get my corners all poked out, I'm gonna do one more move with this, um, with this tool. I'm actually gonna lay this flat and take the point of my, to my tool and run it along the seam. What that does is it really pushes all of the extra seam allowance out flat and it makes it easier to press this. It makes it easier to get it all pressed um, with the iron. Okay, so now we're gonna go to the iron. Now we have not been using steam up to this point because of the silicone, but we're gonna put the steam on now for a couple of reasons. One, I'm gonna press it from the back. Since I only have one piece of fabric, it's easier to get the back flat. I also want to make sure that this is gonna fold in on itself to make the edges really crisp. Okay, so if I push that down and then I also pull these kind of tight, when I press this, the edge is gonna be nice and sharp. So if I get this all where I want it to be and then turn my steam on and press that opening, everything's gonna lay a whole lot flatter. And since I'm not pressing from the silicone side, I'm pressing from the backing, the steam is doing exactly what I want it to do instead of just making it wet. Okay, so I'm gonna steam this really nicely. And I wanna make sure that that opening is pressed under how I want it. Okay, then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go over to my, um, to my machine again and I'm gonna top stitch all the way around the outside. 
I am still going to use my J foot, only now we are going to use this part of the foot to line up the edge. See the inside of the metal where that plastic starts? I'm going to line that right up with the edge of my project. That's going to give me the right distance from the edge and I can still use this same foot. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and stitch that. all the way around. Again, we're going to start where our, our turning opening is because that's the spot we really want to pay attention to getting flat. So again, I still have my longer seam allowance. I still have my slower speed on because I don't want to go zipping around the corners on this one and making a weird mess. So just use the, the edge of your foot here stitch all the way around. If you've got pivot on your machine, use the pivot to get around the corners. If you don't, you can use your knee lift. Your knee lift is a really good tool in this section as well. But just stitch all the way around this outside. Make sure you tie off your beginnings and your ends. And now we have a finished nerdy mug rug. Isn't that cute? Actually, what we have is a match set of nerdy mug rugs. They can fight over who gets which one. So, a couple of benefits to this. If you have um, ice sweet tea and it's sweating, this side is absorbent. It'll soak up any drippings. If you have a hot cup that you don't want to put on your, um, on your wood desk, you can put your hot cup on the silicone side. The silicone is food safe, so if you want to put your cup on this side and your snacks on this side, you don't have to worry about um, your food touching it. The whole thing's washable you, when you spill your coffee on it, because you know you're going to, you can wash these. There's so much fun you can do with these different projects. So this is not by any means all of the things that Around the Bobbin makes for silicone projects, but I'm going to show you a few of them and how much fun you can have on them. So the first one I ever knew about, maybe it's not the first one they came out with, is this really fun oven mitt. Same principles I showed you today, you make an actual quilted fabric oven mitt. The silicone is heat resistant. You can reach right in your oven with it. It's all of, it's all the cool things. Only you can put fun fabric on the outside, fun fabric on the cuff, fun fabric on the inside. This is very instant gratification, self-expression kind of stuff. Same thing though. You're not going to sew onto the silicone. You're going to make the cuff, turn it right way out. It is easier than it looks. And you pre-quilt the mitt before you put it in the silicone. So you have all the layers put together. If you want to make this extra heat resistant, Insole Bright inside your quilting will do that for you. So on today's sale, the things that we're showing is the oven mitt, all of their products, which is pretty cool. All of their products come with the pattern will have one set of silicones in it. So this one's number 100955. Or you can just get the refill. So once you buy the pattern and you have the directions for the pattern, you don't have to spend as much to get just the refill. The pattern is $15.99. The refill is $9.99. So, you, you know, once you have the pattern, you can just buy the refills. All right. So the oven mitt pattern is number 100955. The refill for the oven mitt is 100956. All these numbers are listed above my head. So you can comment sold on those. Then we have the project we showed to you today, which is the snug, um, what is it called? Snug as a mug on a rug. This is the pattern. It is number 110940. So that is for the pattern. This comes with two silicones in it. Once you have the pattern, you can just get the refills. This also has two silicones in it. It's number 110484. If you want to start out with the absolute easiest option to do this technique and you don't want to do the Patrick and the whatever, you just want to quilt something and put the silicone in it, this is a, um, a pot holder or trivet holder. Did I get the right ones? I did. No, these are two sizes. So you can make a large trivet. This one finishes, oh, uh, let's see, what size does it make? A nine and a half inch square. So the middle part is eight inches and then the whole thing is nine and a half inch square. So see, it'll hold a, um, a nine inch casserole dish. You can also, the directions also are in here to make this an oven mitt. 
So if you wanna make it a trivet slash reach into your oven kind of thing, you can do that both ways with this one. Okay, so it's a trivet and or pot holder. This is 10957. We also have the refills of these on the website. I can only put 10 items on a, on a comment sold sale, so if you want the refills, these are also on the website. Um, or it comes in a small size. So this is the small size one. So see how it has a little, um, a little pot on it? This one finishes six and a half. Okay, same thing. Gives you the directions to make it as a pot holder or as a trivet. Super cute. These are quick and easy gifts, guys. So you would need holiday gifts or housewarming gifts or whatever. These are quick things to make in an afternoon. Okay, so that is the smaller trivet. There is also, if you just wanna make coasters. So I'm from the desert. I didn't understand condensation on a cup until I moved to the south and there's humidity. So we didn't really use coasters when I lived in the desert. Now you have to have a coaster or you don't have furniture. This is a really good option for a coaster for two reasons. It's silicone, so you can put hot stuff on it, but it also has fabric, so if it sweats, if you put something cold on it and it sweats, the moisture will get sucked up into the cotton. As a bonus, you also get the pattern to make this little coaster holder. So you can make, I think it makes four coasters, it does, it makes four silicone coasters and a holder. We also have the refills to these on the website. This one, the number you need to comment is 109221. Then the things that we, the tools that we used were our precision turning tool. We've had this on the video quite often. I don't know the number off the top of my head, but it's lifted, listed above up there. And we also used the new Quilter Select, Alex Anderson's new quilting clips. The number for this one is 112002. These have 18 clips in them, and they're the really heavy duty nice ones that we used in today's video. All right. Um, I hope you're inclined to do a couple of things. One, I hope you are not afraid of sewing on silicone now and you have thought of some people that you need to make some things for. And for my nerds out there, don't forget about our Space Invaders quilt. Isn't that so much fun? I haven't decided how I'm going to quilt it yet, but I'm excited. All right. I will see you guys next week with a whole different Maker Monday. Have a nice week. Bye.